I'm here today for one reason. Uh, basically, I think it's my moral and ethical duty to inform other people who are not in the know on this issue, as I wasn't for 20 years, uh, and probably in excess of 20 years using a cell phone. I consider myself a very informed person. I read three or four newspapers a day, and I still was not aware of the fact that I was effectively smoking three or four packs of cigarettes a day while I was using my cell phone for 20 years as far as cancer risk. And it wasn't, as I mentioned in my brief talk, it wasn't until I collapsed in the shower about a year and a half ago, my mother, I mean, excuse me, my wife found me and she thought I was dead. Um, and, and then I woke up and I uh, ended up in the hospital. Uh, that I'm really lucky to be alive right now after the experience I've had over the last year, which I attribute unequivocally, categorically, for sure, to cell phones. I have a brain tumor, I had a brain tumor, an anaplastic astrocytoma grade three brain tumor the size of a baseball that was literally stopping my heart um, when I had a seizure and I was having seizures. It got to a point when I was having seizures every couple of days until I had it removed. Um, and What so, side did you use your phone? Right here. Right where the antenna went, exactly. As a matter of fact, I even got a picture of it on my cell phone. Did you use the same kind of phone all those, those years? No, I've used different phones. Um, in different companies um, throughout the duration of my cell phone use, as most people have. But I'm, um, you know, as I learned in law school, fraud is the intentional misrepresentation of a material fact. Um, and that's what I am perceiving is going on here with the, uh, some of these bodies, these lobbyists, some of the companies that I've known in my research over the last year, and I've been researching extensively, it's very clear that they've known um, that there's a, a, a nexus to brain tumors from cell phones. And they are not only denying it, they're spinning it to the American public. Mm -hmm. And I'm spending about, I'm finding myself spending about an hour of my time walking down the street, to walk up to parents mm -hmm. and saying, are you aware of what happened? Do you want to see these pictures of my MRI? Um, uh, um, you do not want your child doing this. Brett, would and, you say and then spell your name for me? Tell me your age. Yes, my, my name is Brett, B-R-E-T, Bo Cook, B-O-C-O-O-K, and I'm 46 years old. From what city? Where do you Palo Alto. Right That's very kind. Now, how long did you use a cell phone? I've used, I was an early adopter. I used a cell phone immediately when it came out. Um, there's a, a lot of good benefits from cell phones. It's not like a cigarette where there's no benefits, and that's one of the more dangerous things about a cell phone. Um, and so I used a cell phone from 1988 um, up until, and I still do use a cell phone, but I use precautions. I never put a cell phone up to my head, ever. I text or and or use speakerphone, and I limit my time to a cell phone. And these are all basic precautions that if I would have been told about over the last 20 years, I wouldn't have found myself with a brain tumor and put my life in jeopardy. I have a smoking hot wife at home, I've got a four-year-old son, and I'm not happy at all that this has been put in jeopardy, that my life has been put in jeopardy over the last year, and I, I'm on a mission, as ill he is, to see to it that no one else is exposed to these types of dangers, for no reason. It's not necessary to use a cell phone and to put it up to your head. You can do a lot of alternative ways to communicate. Um, and just basic precautions. But the cell phone industry, it's incumbent upon them, for them, to communicate this to the public as opposed to spinning it and confusing people. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Kristen Frischman. Um, my husband died December of 09. He was 42. He was an avid cell phone user. <clears throat> he lived in LA. He was in the entertainment industry. We went to, uh, when he found out, we went to Dr. Keith Black of Cedar Sinai and we asked him how this could happen. He said, cell phone uh, causes a brain tumor. This, this cause is important to me because, unfortunately, my husband didn't know the effects of cell phones. So I want people to know. A lot of people are like me, naive, and know, you know, what I can't see won't hurt me. But in, in case it does, it does. It hurts a lot, and it hurt my two children. 
Who doesn't have a father anymore? I'm sorry. Don't, don't be sorry. sorry. No, and it makes sorry. me angry. They should be sorry, not you. Yes. And then it makes me angry that they know, they know it causes brain cancer. But what's the harm of letting people know that it does? Why fight San Francisco to let the people know that it does cause it? It's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. So here I am trying to let people know that it's horrible. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. No, thank you. Do you have any questions? Uh, my name is Craig Farver. This is my wife, Virginia Farver. And uh, I think somebody asked a minute ago, why now? And I can show you a picture of why now. This is our 28-year-old son that died in uh, October 11th of 2008, was diagnosed with glioblastoma brain cancer in March of 2008. He lasted seven months and died seven days after his 29th birthday. And it just doesn't turn one person's life around, it turns a lot of people's lives around and you're never the same. But we were told the same thing when we went in and got his diagnosis from the, the neurosurgeon. We asked him because we were naive at the time and we said, what causes something like this? And he never hesitated once and said cell phone use. And so in the past year, my wife has been doing a lot of research and doing a lot of digging. And we found and we've got a hold of his mobile phone company. And he was a heavy user from 1998 until 2008. And I can't even hardly show you the stack of bills and papers that showed his usage on that cell phone was extremely high because he didn't have a landline. He, he just specifically relied on a, on a cell phone for his daily use for everything, talking to his girlfriend, his mom, to me, to anybody, and was on it probably 10 hours a day. So that's what we want to get out, is we want people to know that this is just the tip of the iceberg. I don't think people realize what we're getting into, that we are just the beginning people that are seeing what's happening to our young people and our families, and it's destroying families. That's what it's doing. It's destroyed our family. Our life will never be the same. Can I get your name again? Yeah, my name's Craig Farver, F-A-R-V-E-R. -E we're from Fort Collins, Colorado. Hi, my name is Stuart Paul. I'm a brain tumor survivor. We're from Portland, Maine. Our story started back in April. April 27th was when I got diagnosed with a brain tumor. It was the day before my youngest daughter's birthday. We live in the same state that um, chose not to port. Um, warnings on cell phones and um, that <laughs> unfortunately um, that was a month Stuart was diagnosed a month after our state chose not to do this um, when we learned about um, our state we went on to learn about San Francisco um, doing the right to know ordinance um, and we also learned about Dennis Kucinich who's trying to um, create a, a federal new federal research um, studying you know the links between cell phone use and brain tumors and also to put um, warning uh, warning labels on all cell phones and I absolutely agree they, they need to put um, warning labels on cell phones there was a time that cigarettes didn't have warning labels and people thought they were crazy but we're not crazy you, you hear the families that their doctors are asking, I mean, that's, that's how we found out. Our doctor asked that day he was diagnosed, how often he used his cell phone. And from there, we went on to think, why would a doctor ask that for? Could you tell me your name? Yes, Kristen Cobb. Spell for me, Kristen. Um, K-R-I-S-T-E-N-C-O-B-B. -B. Okay, you're from Portland. Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine, yes. Uh, there are physicians that are asking, obviously, us. Um, I just think more physicians need to come out. And uh, if they're seeing an increase, they need to bring this to the public's attention. Can you first name again? Stuart Cobb. Stuart Cobb. Is it S T U A R T? Yes. My name is Mindy Brown. My husband was Dan Brown. He was a defensive coordinator at Fresno State football team. Um, he died March 13, 2008. 
2009, just 18 months ago. I'm here because I'm supporting Mayor Newsom for this bold move that he's making. You guys don't know how much awareness, if anything, it's bringing to the nation. People need to know, we didn't know, we didn't know your phone emits radiation. We joked about it. My husband's ear would get bright red and he'd have to hold his phone out to here during his recruiting calls. He lived on his phone for two decades and it ended up killing him. Here's a statistic. This is my husband. You're looking at it face forward just like you're looking at him. Here's his ear canal. You hold the phone up, ear canal, tumor. People, listen, it's happening. It's happening to you if you're holding that thing up to your head. Get rid of it. I don't mean get rid of it. I don't want to say that. I have a cell phone. I just don't hold it to my head. I don't put it in my pocket. My future daughter-in-law, left-handed, holds her phone in her left pocket. Um, about a week after I buried my husband, she was in the hospital having her ovary removed. Nobody knows. I'd like to say two things. I want to thank San Francisco for doing this or trying to do it. To CDIA, I want to say shame on you. Shame on you. Let's err on the side of caution. Let's err on the side of humanity. I mean, you can only look good. Help coming out with the truth that we don't know. Let's find out about it. In the meantime, let's take precautions, people. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Would, you would you say your first name one more time? Mindy, mind you, I. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is Ellie Marks, and uh, my own husband has a malignant glioma from his 20 years of cell phone use held to his right ear, and the tumor is in his right frontal lobe. Um, these tumors destroy families. Um, this thing tore our family apart before he, even, before he even had his seizure, as it was in his right frontal lobe, which caused chaos in our family. It, it affected behavior. And, Thank God that's improved and I have my loving husband back now and I hope that I will have him here for a long time. But the prognosis is not good. It is a malignant brain tumor. These people that we've, been, we've interviewed today are just the tip of the iceberg. Shame on the CTIA, as Mindy Brown said. I fully supported San Francisco and Mayor Newsom in his efforts. I actually had a meeting with him a few weeks ago which he, in which he said that the cell phone industry is the most despicable industry he has come across. He's been sued by many industries, but they are the worst. Um, what I really want people to understand is, since I've been advocating about this for about two and a half years, many people do listen, but the majority do not, and they feel that it will not happen to them. My husband thought that it would not happen to him. He wasn't warned at all. So people need to know, and I'm so grateful to all these wonderful people from across the nation for helping me get this point across, Dr. Deborah Davis for helping get this point across. People need to know. People have the right to know. And one of the big contradictions is, in these little booklets that come with your phone, that most people don't read other than probably me, um, it is telling you to adhere to the FCC federal regulations, one must never hold the device to their head or to their body. Each one gives you a little bit different language. The new one, the Blackberry Torch, as Deborah, I believe, mentioned, says to keep it 0.98 inches from the abdomen, lower abdomen, of a teenager. So somebody in their 20s, it's okay? No, I don't think so. The language is contradictory to what the CTIA and the FCC are telling us. And everybody needs to get together on this and do the right thing. Thank you. Just so we're clear, and this is a pretty powerful image. This is my brain on a cell phone, okay? So if you can see there, there's a baseball-sized tumor and right here, right exactly where the antenna goes, um, and went for 20 years. So if anyone has any doubt, 
it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you'll get one of these if you put a cell phone up to your brain long enough. It's just that simple. That's what I'm learning here. Now, I don't have that tumor anymore because it was removed in very dangerous surgery. And, and with chemo and radiation and a lot of other things I've gone through over the last year, which no one wants their son or daughter going through. And as I mentioned, you're hearing about a lot of other people who didn't make it through a year, and I have, and I think that I'm cancer-free now. But um, it's taking a toll. Mayor Newsom had the courage to stand up and set precedent throughout the country in, in spite of the CTIA taking their football and running off the field because they, because they weren't happy. Uh, my, my message is to them, if they keep up this fraudulent misrepresentation, we're going to break them into a million pieces, and they can stay out of the city, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> this seems to be tracking a similar trajectory that the smoking industry did in the 50s and 60s, where doctors were coming out and telling, telling consumers to smoke, because it's going to be help, helpful to get over a cold. Um, and this type of ludicrous advice and s medical spin, I think it has to do with um, money uh, and that they don't want to acknowledge that there's a link between brain tumors and, and cell phones. This is my personal opinion and that um, the simplest way to do that is to just defend and spin and not acknowledge um, and, and to take discredit scientists, discredit studies, discredit people, um, and that's a, it's a typical mechanism to spin science. It's been done for decades. I'm not an expert on this, to tell you the truth, but I'm going to be relying on experts like Deborah Davis and other people, Burton Goldberg, um, to explain the science to me, um, and we'll be putting, um, they'll be getting on the stand and testifying as to the dangers, and we'll be putting witnesses up. Um, and this is going to be tried in court eventually, whether it's me or someone else. But eventually, these, these, the truth is going to come out, just like it did with the smoking industry, regardless of whether there's able to... Everyone knows smoking causes cancer. Can you show that at a molecular level? I'm not so sure, but everyone knows that. Well, everyone's going to know that about cell phones and brain tumors, and that's one of the reasons, the main reason why I'm here today, is to try to explain that and elucidate that to people so they can protect their children, frankly. Just like I'm protecting my son, I don't let him get anywhere near a cell phone, and he's four years old, and I'm very concerned about even Wi-Fi, um, um, him being in a house with Wi-Fi, and we're actually disconnecting the Wi-Fi in our house right now because of my concern that childhood brain tumors have now surpassed leukemia as the number one killer of children. And why is that? Since cell phones and wireless industries have become ubiquitous in our society over the last 10 or 20 years, and that eclipse has happened um, from leukemia to brain tumors as the number one killer of children. So wake up, America. That's what I have to say about it.